Okay. I'm going to use a piece of babbit to demonstrate this because I don't have the forge going today. Uh, we have the air turned on to the primary valve, and we're going to hit the treadle. Get there in the cycle. Just sit there and cycle like that all day long. Allow you to put your work in there and then you can hit the treadle. Okay, we're going to forge a piece of two and a quarter round. Get the air turned on to the hammer. I'm going to set this with the right amount of hit, kind of hit that I want. Once you use it a while, you'll get used to which settings need to be. They are. away from it. Bring it in a little bit closer.
Rick, I don't know if this camera has an audio recorder, so I'm going to narrate this uh, as we go along, uh, uh, just in case it does. Uh, we'll get started first with the power source for this hammer, which is a, is a 150 Ingersoll uh, 70s, early 70s inch compressor. I bought two of these for scrap for a hundred bucks and cobbled them together into one that worked for me. The compressor feeds a primary reservoir which is a thousand gallon propane tank. I use the reservoirs uh, primarily to remove water from the system because uh, the hammer likely would be sitting for long periods without use and I wanted to try to eliminate as much water from the system as possible. This primary reservoir feeds into a secondary condenser, 80 gallon uh, vertical tank uh, uh, through two centrifugal water traps. I don't know if they're necessary, they don't uh, pull a hell of a lot of water out, but every little bit uh, uh, seems to help. <clears throat> the secondary reservoir then comes through the wall and along into the back of the hammer through a primary valve. The original hammer uh, setup was fed by a three inch line so I maintained that line. That valve feeds the hammer through a third centrifugal water trap and then there's a secondary valve that has an actuator, pneumatic actuator on it, that uh, is activated by the treadle. And that uh, uh, sends the air into the actual hammer valve, which is controlled by the treadle and controls the amount of airflow into the hammer. There's an exhaust manifold there that I made. It has four perforated baffles in it that the oil in the exhaust precipitates on and then runs track down into the reservoir for the oiler that I made out of an old um, oil burner pump. The reservoir feeds the pump, the pump pumps the oil through a 10 micron filter. The filter then sends the oil up into the airstream uh, through a valve and the nozzle from the old oil burner and blows the air or blows the oil right into the airstream as it enters the hammer. Okay, I fit this with a treadle uh, because I work alone. Uh, this is a later model hammer so it was bossed for a treadle. The linkage here has several adjustments for uh, fine tuning and basically the treadle does two things. It actuates the pump and the air valve uh, through an electric switch and it also controls the amount of air that enters the hammer through the uh, tertiary valve. The stroke of the hammer is controlled by this long lever here which adjusts the position of this shoe as it uh, contacts the, uh, its track in the back of the, the, the hammer itself. And that will change the reference of the shoe so that it changes the stroke of the valve gear um, that uh, controls the piston. Now, you'll find that the hammer block the, the anvil block is held in place uh, by a wedge here. The uh, original wedge had to be burned out. I, I took it out. It wouldn't, it wouldn't drive out. I burned it out with an uh, oxygen lance. The proper way to set this is to heat it and uh, set it in place and then drive the wedge in tight and let it shrink. If you're going to use it uh, heavily and for a long period of time, that's the way to, to, to proper way to set the anvil block. Uh, uh, I didn't do that. I set it with a, an old gib. The wedge that's that's in here is a gib uh, from an old uh, 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 mill, 
and it'll work itself loose from time to time. You just have to reposition it and drive the wedge in tight again. <clears throat> the anvil itself is held in reference to the frame by several wedges that you can see uh, around the circumference of the around the circumference of the uh, of the frame. Okay, I fit this with a treadle uh, because I work alone. Uh, this is a later model hammer, so it was bossed for a treadle. The linkage here has several adjustments for uh, fine tuning, and basically the treadle does two things. It actuates the pump and the air valve uh, through an electric switch, and it also controls the amount of air that enters the hammer through the uh, tertiary. The uh, hammer frame, as you can see here, I've removed the front table. Uh, the hammer rests on two 12-inch timbers uh, that are bolted, anchored here uh, in four places to the concrete piers. And the anvil is surrounded by sand as uh, basically as a fire preventative. <clears throat> 